Today I'm going to show you that a DIY solar build is so simple and easy anybody from age 8 to 80 can build one. All you need is four basic components, some basic tools, and some wire. To begin with, you're going to need a solar panel. That, as you can imagine, captures the sun's energy. From there, that energy goes into this. This is a charge controller. From the charge controller, it goes into the battery. Battery is kind of the heart of the whole system. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. They're really powerful and they're really inexpensive. From there, that battery is going to go into this inverter. This is going to take that battery power and turn it into regular AC, just like in your house. You're going to need some wire to connect between the battery and the inverter. Some wire to connect between the charge controller and the battery. And some wire to connect between the solar panel and the charge controller. We're also going to fuse it. And now I'm going to show you how to hook it all up. It's so simple, it's going to amaze you. And once you learn how to do this, you can take these concepts and make any size system. Because whether you're building something small for an off-grid cabin or for emergency backup, or you're building something huge to run your whole neighborhood, it's the same four components just scaled up. So hang on, hang out, tune in. Let's have some fun today. We're going to use a 12-volt inverter. It goes with our 12-volt battery. When you buy the inverter, it's going to come with the cable that's needed. You can see this is brand new wire. The red is positive. The black is negative. And everything is color-coded. So it's going to be really hard to make a mistake. First thing we're going to do, we're going to hook up our red wire to the red of the inverter. Unscrew it, slip that on, make sure you take this one off first, slip that on, slip that on, and tighten it. Now you don't want to use a tool on this, you don't want it to be too tight, and these can be delicate, you can break them, and I know from experience because I've broken some. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Black to black. Same thing. Hand tighten it. Look at that. We're a third of the way done already. We'll put that off to the side. Now we're going to wire up our charge controller. Now this is much, much thinner wire. You're going to put some ring terminals on this end. Make sure your wires are about the same length. They don't have to be absolutely perfect, but you don't want a, one that's a one foot and then one that's six feet. Then you just trim off the end. See, that one's already trimmed off. That's what these are for. These will cut, trim, and crimp. I'm just going to trim this off about the same distance. So now I have the two bare ends. We'll take our charge controller. Now on the charge controller, you're going to see on this one, there's two sets of inputs. Some, there will be three. You can see there's a PV, solar panels, battery, battery, and on some, you'll see another one that says load. Now we're going to take a closer look at this charge controller. Take this lid off. You can see there is a Phillips screw head, and then there's these gates. So you're going to take your wires. Now these are going to the battery. So go to that battery. Remember the red is positive. Slide that into that gate. This is where that Phillips screwdriver is going to come in handy. Once it's in, you want to turn it. You'll feel it tightening up. It's really obvious. Very hard to do this wrong. Get it nice and snug. Give it a yank. I'm going to do the same thing on the negative. Remember, black is negative. Slide it into that gate. 
tighten it down. Give it a yank. I want to make sure these are nice and snug. We got the first part of it wired. Now let's wire in the solar panel. We're going to use our solar wire. This has got MC4 connectors on it. The solar panel also has MC4 connectors. They're male and female. They're going to go right into each other. It's impossible to do it wrong. We're going to hook up the other end into that charge controller. Hardest part is getting the zip ties off. Now on this end, it's bare. So we're going to strip this back. We're going to put these right there where it said PV. That's where these come in handy. Strip back about three-fourths of an inch. There's the first side. Now we're going to do the positive. And once we have them stripped, we're going to put them in those gates just like we did on the battery. So we got the PV, got the plus. Remember, this is plus. Slide it into that gate. Tighten it down just like the first one. Give it a pull. Just like the other one. Black goes to negative. Make it nice and snug. Give it a pull. Look at that. We are almost done. Now, we are not going to hook these up to the solar panels yet. We're going to do that last. We want to hook the battery the charge controller up first, but what we really want to do first is hook up our inverter. Now, before we hook up the inverter, we got to hook up this. This is a terminal fuse. These are really, really advanced batteries, and they got all sorts of protection, but it's always a good idea to add a fuse on top of it. Just goes in like that. That's where this comes in. Make that nice and snug. Now, whenever you're putting on wires and cables, the big guy always goes on first. So this guy's going to go on like this. The cable goes on on top of it. So now the next step is to hook up the negative to the negative. But before we do that, there's something I got to tell you about. If I was to touch this to this, I'm going to complete this circuit. What can happen is there can be a spark because a bunch of energy wants to leave this battery and fill up the capacitors in this. Now, some inverters, like this one, have circuitry in them that will mitigate that. But if it doesn't, what you can use is a 25 ohm resistor. Put that on there. Put this on this end. Let that sit there for a little bit. That way it'll fill up those capacitors nice and slow and you're not going to get that spark. Here we go. Let's see if it worked. Look at that. No spark. Now, I'm just putting that on for a second because I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to grab this. Now, once I connect this, this guy's going to light up. Pull that back off. But we are almost done wiring this. And you can see it is so incredibly easy to wire. And now the final step is to connect the charge controller to our solar panels. We're just going to connect the MC4 connectors to each other. It's impossible to mess this up. You just take the male, put it in the female. Female, 
put it in the mail. Now once I do this, we have a completely wired system. See how easy that was? So now you got to be feeling pretty happy and confident that you know how to wire up the four components to a small DIY solar build. Now let's take it to the next level and talk about how to monitor it and how to use it. To monitor it, you use this. This is a monitor that comes with this particular inverter. You plug in the cable, other end of the cable plugs into the inverter. It's got a long cable, so you can mount this anywhere you'd like. This will allow you to turn the inverter on. You hear that? Inverter's on now. You can also see everything that's going on in your inverter. Now to use the inverter is very, very simple. You use it just like the electricity in your house. Plug something in. Now the only caveat is this inverter has a limit. 1280 watts of power is all it can do. So whatever you plug in, make sure it's less than that. Let's turn something on, see how it works. Now this remote is showing me that 570 watts power is going through the system. It's just amazing. But that's not the end of the amazingness. This battery is also a smart battery. That means it has an app that lets you watch what's going on with the battery. But that's not the end of the coolness either. This charge controller is also a smart charge controller. It has an app that lets you monitor all of the solar power coming into it. And it is a 100 volt charge controller meaning for example this is about a 21 volt panel so you could add multiple panels in series this charge controller is going to take all of that solar power coming in and turn it into usable power that this battery is going to like now the final thing we're going to talk about is these cables wires and this fuse this is a 12 volt battery this is a 1200 watt inverter we're going to divide that, we're going to get 100 amps. That means the most amount of current or amperage going between the battery and the inverter is 100 amps. So we got to make sure our cable can take that amount of current. In our case, we have a two gauge cable, which is more than adequate for that. Now to the fuse, we just said 100 amps of current is going to be going through here. So you want to make sure your fuse can do 100 amps plus a little bit more. So in our case, we have a 125 amp fuse. Now I'm sure you noticed that the wires going from the battery to the charge controller are considerably smaller. And that's because the maximum current that the charge controller can put out is only 30 amps. So the wires can be much smaller. Same with the wires going to the solar panels. It's just less current, so they can be smaller. But that's it. You have now learned how to make a small 12 volt off-grid solar system and these are the same concepts as any size system so if you wanted to build a 24 volt or a 48 volt or a bigger system more batteries bigger inverters you now know the concepts behind everything and you can build it out to any size you'd like now if you have any questions about anything you've seen today please leave a comment below if somebody has built a different size system different voltage system love to hear your story please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to everyone soon.